Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about um, Margaret Fuller's The Great Lawsuit, uh, Man vs. Men, Woman vs. Women. Now, before I go into summary and analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. So this work is extremely complex. There's a lot of things that Margaret Fuller talks about within the great lawsuit. She talks about slavery. She talks about equality. She talks about God. She talks about spirituality. She talks about um, enlightenment. She talks about the role of women in society. Um, she talks about these um, four equalities or, or four... Um, kind of like um, areas or categories of equality. Um, she talks about um, marriage, um, and it's 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 a lot. Um, so within this video, within this summary analysis, I'm going to be touching upon um, some of the major ideas that um, she covers. Um, that will give you guys a closer idea of what she's talking about within this great lawsuit. And all of the things, um, I guess you can say, she brings to the courtroom um, and argues about society and the world of a whole. So, um, you know, buckle up, because this is a lot. This is definitely a lot. Um, wh one thing, one major thing of in this piece that she talks about um, is the role of women um, in society. Uh, the role of women um, and men. Um, and um, in, in the area or in the time period that she lived in, um, women um, didn't have access um, or equal access to education. Um, women were expected to stay at home, you know, um, have kids, get married. Their, their parents, their fathers would decide who they get married to. Um, they would be passed on to their husbands and their husbands would have complete dominance um, and rulership over them, um, and you know Margaret Fuller. He, she's arguing here that um, you know she's very grateful that her father allowed her to get an education. Her father drilled her. You know her father really um, told her um, and instructed her and gave her an education that was very rigorous. Um, so um, ever since she was a small child, she um, was in school, or her father taught her. Um, her father did not, you know, he was relentless in her education. And so um, she read um, works um, from offers from Europe, um, works from the offers that existed in America at the time. Um, and within this work, she talks about slavery and black people and freedom. She criticizes America and how it had gone away from um, its ideals. You know, in America, since its founding, there's a, this central principle, this this ideal of, um, you know, all men are created equal. And, and Margaret Fuller, you know, she talks about, well, have we, um, you know, have we upheld this ideal of all men uh, are created equal? Uh, because she's saying at the time, you know, for women, you, you know, you couldn't vote. Um, you couldn't get involved in politics. You couldn't get involved in public um, um, debates, public discussions, um, you couldn't speak your mind. Um, men at the time said, you know, if women get involved in politics and public discussions, they might lose their feminine grace. Uh, they might lose the thing that make men attracted to them. Um, you know, women didn't have an education. Women didn't have um, access to property. Uh, women pretty much weren't in control of their lives. There was no self-reliance. Um, it was very, very, in most universities, most schools uh, were close to women. And so, um, you know, women, the only thing that they could do is either get married and be a wife and, and take care of the family um, or be an old maid and not get married. And she, she really um, went against this. And, and, and so she talks about the part of women in society and what was expected of them. Um, you know, of course, at that time, women couldn't, you know, most jobs didn't accept women. Um, it's not until the world wars that women came into um, the working uh, world in the U.S. Or, or largely. I mean, before then, most women, they could be things like 
um, um, you know, I mean, the jobs you could have was like, they all were home based, maybe um, taking care of clothes, washing clothes, taking care of the house, cooking, cleaning, being a maid, um, um, being a, um, uh, you know, some type of, of nanny, some type of babysitter. Um, so really jobs that pertain to the home. I mean, Margaret Fuller was like, you know, women, they, they, there's more of this. And she argued that in order for uh, the world to become a better place, in order for human, the human race to reach enlightenment, uh, we had to let go of the reins and let women, um, you know, explore the world intellectually. I um, mean, she says, and when she goes into the, the four equalities, she talks about the t different types of marriages you can have. I mean, the first type of marriage is kind of like, you know, the man is the provider. Um, the man, um, you know, offers protection and money and home and, and appliances and material goods. And the wife is kind and sweet and gentle and she takes care of a home and she's a good homemaker. And the husband is, is nice and kind. Um, and then she goes into like these, you know, um, the, the the next type is kind of like when you have um, the husband has a type of pride, the woman has a type of pride, and and it's kind of like this. Um, um, they're both idols, and they're both kind of like they're married. They're married, but there's a little bit of unsettled um, unhappiness or anger, or they're just not seeing eye to eye, and the the woman's not fully happy, and the man's not fully happy because. The woman is not submitting. And then you go into kind of like intellectual partners um, where, you know, the woman, the man has his intellect. The woman has his intellect. And um, they're both kind of like um, helping each other along this intellectual road where uh, the woman has a mind and the man has a mind. And they can be partners or they can share ideas and collaborate and they both can work hard and, and contribute to society and be hand in hand um, in, in kind of like an ideal to get to know each other. Um, and, and this kind of like this soulmate type of thing later she goes on to talk about. Um, so all of these equalities or four ideals, you know, she kind of like champions the, the one where, you know, women... Um, now, let's not get this wrong. Uh, Margaret Fuller, she does think that marriage is good. She does think that women should get married. Um, she just requires for women to be able to um, go into public society, um, have the jobs in law and, 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 you know, in law and being doctors and teachers, um, you know, all them, the jobs that men have. She argues that women should be able to have these jobs as well. Um, she argues that, you know, women should be able to um, have all the rights that men have. Um, there's, there's even an instance where she says, you know, at, at her time, during her time period, you know, if, if a woman's husband um, dies, she doesn't get the full property or all of his property, even though she's, um, you know, his wife. Um, so she argues that in, 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 in that, in that sense, you know, if you're married and, and, um, your husband dies, you're entitled to his stuff. I mean, you're the wife, you, um, you lived with him. You, you're, you're going to need money to take care of yourself and perhaps his kids. Um, so I understand that point of, um, you know, um, you know, a woman should be entitled to, you know, everything that her husband has when he's dead. I mean, if they have children, um, you know, she's going to need help to take care of the, the children. Um, and of course, um, you know, that's that's her husband. I mean, I don't know who else if if you don't leave it to the wife and the kids, I don't know who else you give it to. Um, so um, in, in certain I, in certain countries and, 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 and especially in the past, um, you would see like uh, a husband's land go to back to the family or go to a brother or go to the father. Um, so you you have you do see things like that in in um, in early America, you can say. Um, so so Margaret Fuller, she goes into 
um, she talks about the soul. She talks about God. She says, like, well, she does admit this. This is one thing that, that I have to bring up. She admits that when women do get freedom and women um, get uh, an education as, um, equal to men, one thing that will happen is you will get more women that go unmarried. And that, that in 2022, I would say that's a, that's an, that's a true reality because the more women become um, educated and, and now in the U.S. in 2022, more women are going to college and more women are uh, obtaining an education more than men, uh, the more that happens, the less marriages are a reality um, um, because, well, it's hard to have two parties that kind of seek to dominate each other when two two when a man and a woman uh, all that they seek is to dominate each other um you well you're gonna get divorces when people don't see eye to eye you're gonna get divorces now she talks about that and she says well this might resolve um the 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 thing that the outcome of this might be a lot of women are left unmarried um, and that's the reality. Now, that's not to say that it's better for women not to get educated and not to be, um, uh, not to get married. Um, but the thing is, like, she does recognize that that's a true reality that might happen. And, and it did happen because in 2022, around the world, a lot of women are choosing not to get married or pushing married uh, marriage all the way back um, until their late 30s or, or 40s or never. Um, and... Uh, some people that uh, do claim that makes some women unhappy. Now the thing is, like she talks about God when we when we're talking about marriage here, because again, we're talking about uh, an America that was very religious. We're talking about an America um, that did um, a lot of people were Christian, or most people at the time were were extremely Christian. Um, and so she says that you know if women are not getting married, if men are not getting married they can devote that time or that attention to God, which was very interesting because I'm like, most people are not going to do that. If you're not married or if marriage is not interest, doesn't interest you or you're not focused on that and you don't want to get married, you don't want to have disagreements with a husband or a wife, and she says, you know, she says that you should probably focus and take, take that energy and focus upon God. But the thing is, like, again, most people are not going to do that. Um... And so, which is a problem because when she talks about God and, and, and when you look at this from a biblical perspective, um, in the Bible it does say that men should love their wives as Christ loved the church um, and that women should submit to their husband. Now, this is very significant when you're looking at Margaret Fuller and her ideas and the Christian society that she lived in because um, in the Bible it does say that Men and women can get along if men um, who have um, Christ as their leaders. Um, and, and so the way that the, the Christian perspective of this is, is that men has men have Christ as their head, as their leader. And the woman has the husband as their head. Um, if that is followed to the letter that men follow God, and women follow, or wives follow their husbands, there should be harmony. Because Christ commands the husband to love their wives as uh, the church. And um, the Bible also commands women to submit to their husband. If husband loves their, love their wives as the church, um, then the, the husband will not abuse or take advantage or oppress the wife. Um, and then the wife could then submit to the husband. Um, but the things like in a society that does not recognize God or recognize that principle, um, and everybody is just left to their own in, um, intellect, um, and they're searching and trying to understand the world for themselves or their own feminine um, identity, uh, what often happens is that you cannot get an agreement um, because then, well, everybody develops this masculine um, ideal of I'm right. Um, and so you get a lot of disgruntled people because um, for most men, they look for a wife that can can be a mother because um, most men want to have children. What most men, you're, you know, you're biologically um, designed to reproduce both men and women are. So all humans um, have this sense of reproduction, this um, want to have children. 
Um, and well, when you when you go against that, um, what basically happens is, I mean, you can't reach an agreement within marriage. Um, well, then that that marriage, you know, you can't have children. You push that back, and then we go into biological reasons why you can't have children. Um, and so it it can get to a place where. Um, within this work where Margaret Fuller is arguing for intellectual freedom, um, education for women, but she doesn't have clear resolutions for her ideas. I think she's stating all the things like this lawsuit is complex because she's stating a lot of things here that make sense. Like I do agree that women should have equal access to education. Women should be educated. They, should, they can work. Uh, they can have their freedom, they, they need full rights, all of that is true, all of that, you know, all of that has come true, all of the things that Margaret Fuller argues for, it has come true, I mean, we had the women's suffrage movement, women can vote, women can be lawyers, doctors, whatever they want, women can run for president, um, everything that a man can do, all the rights that men have, women have also, but at the same time, another thing that has come true with Margaret Fuller's work is that well, marriages are under decline in 2022. Marriages are under decline, and you have more women that are reaching their 40s and 50s, and they're childless and not married. Now, for some women, that's exactly what they want. But for others, there's a disconnection because, I mean, you still want children, and you there's several ways you can have children nowadays. But, well, that ideal of being alone and old, well, that's also, that's also um, it has come true. Um, and so... You're seeing in, in many places now, in many countries, uh, where Margaret Fuller's ideals, I don't think we've reached a level of harmony, because she said when women have that intellectual capacity to think and go to school and have education, that you would reach a level of harmony within the world. And I think we've we've gone further than that, because more in 2022, in the current age, um, more women attend colleges um, in universities than men. So women have, or women go to college more than men nowadays. Uh, but now there's this disconnect between men and women. There's um, less marriages, um, less children being born. Um, and uh, well, men and women are, are arguing more and more than ever. Um, so it's very complex. Um, and the idea is, you know, um, they seem to work together, but they're, they're, they have not produced the results that I think Margaret Fuller would have expected. Because um, I think that it has caused more disagreements between men and women than agreements. And I think uh, a lot of men or modern men and women nowadays cannot come to the marriage union because, well, you have two people of, you know, who are educated, who want what they want, um, and it's not coming to the point of submission for both parties, um, because she does argue the, the the religious point of view, and the religious point of view has the wife submitting to the husband, and the, the husband lifting up the wife as something priceless, uh, but now you do not have that in society, because men do not lift uh, the woman as something priceless, as Christ did to the church, um, and women are not submitting to their husbands. So it, it, it just, there's just disconnect where people are not getting exactly what they want. Um, because uh, it, when you look at the religious point of view of this argument that Margaret, Margaret Fuller raises with the great lawsuit, um, the ideal, the enlightenment that she she says that we would reach, I don't think you will ever get to it because um, it just it just doesn't exactly work. It it just doesn't. Um, now, one solution I could propose to this, or from reading the work and looking at all the points that she makes, um, you could say that. Coming from her background of of her uh, Protestant background, her re religious background, I think you could make it work through the through the lens of you know I agree that women should have education, should have all the rights that men do, 
but I also to make it work, you would also have to be a godly or a uh, a, a family that that is Christian or has that kind of point of view because if there is no kind of like principle following that principle of Christianity, I don't see how our ideas work because in order for um, for the man to to see his wife as an equal, um, he has to um, cherish her um, as Christ did the church. In order for the woman to submit to the man, um, she has to see that love coming from him, which allows her to submit to her husband. But most people are not Christians. Well, a lot of people are not practicing Christians nowadays, so it, it doesn't work. So Margaret Fuller, she's a Christian, she has ideas that um that are very secular. Um, she has ideas about the the role of women, the equality of women. I think some of these are true. Some of these have happened. You know, when we're talking about women's suffrage, when we're talking about women getting an education, when we're talking about women's rights, that's great. Um, that you know, she wanted that. That's happened in the world. I don't think she's right about this producing better marriages. I think. This it, the the idea that women being more free and more um, educated would produce be better marriages has not taken place. I'm just making an observation. I'm not suggesting. Um, I mean, the only thing I could suggest could be better is is the Christian family and female education and female rights. Uh, but she, this is not what she's suggesting. Um, so the the better marriage um, point that she raises, I don't think it works. Um, or we haven't seen it come to that. Women have gotten more education, more equality in terms of getting an education, but it has not produced a better society. Um, I think it's produced more discourse in society. Um, and, and, and yeah, so, I mean, she even talks about the virtue of women that, you know, and then in her time, the, the, the virtue of the woman or the perfect woman is the virgin woman that is a mother the, the, the perfect woman that gets married that is a, a mother that takes care of the home. And in many centuries, in many countries, that is the, the perfect view of the woman, the, the kind, submissive, um, gentle woman that, that is just uh, amazing um, at taking care of her family. And for many people, that is the, the, um, the perfect view of the woman. Um, and, I mean, in modern terms, the perfect view of the woman is, um, and, and, and even the Bible would argue for this, you know, women do have the ability to, um, you know, learn, uh, have all the rights that men have, be mothers, um, you know, of course, if you want to, um, have all your rights um, and take care of the home. Because ultimately, um, most people want to have a family. Uh, but if the man or the husband and the man do not want to have a compromise, then it just doesn't work. Um, so Margaret Fuller here, her arguments, I agree with the equality. I agree with women having equal access to jobs, equal access uh, to money and power and, and, and property. Um, I agree with the idea of them working, um, being able to own stuff. Um, you know, that's all true. Um, but I do not agree with her ideals unless you, you go through the Christian method or through the, the godly method. Um, her point of women being um, educated and, and being more allowed or, or being allowed in public society to share their ideas her points about that creating better marriages and better families and, and society reaching enlightenment, her point that has not come true. In fact, the opposite has come, come true um, because women and men do not see eye to eye with more education. Um, the only thing I think that, that makes men and women work together is that, that Christian ideal of um, men loving their wives and their wives loving 
uh, their husbands, you know, husbands loving their wives and wives loving their husbands and, and sharing um, thoughts and ideas and education. Now, that would work. Um, that ideal would work. Um, and you can see that in, in certain Christian families and Christian households that, you know, women have their equality, they're mothers, they're, they're business women, and they have freedom and rights, and their husband respect them, and they respect their husband. And there's submissiveness and love between that union. That would work. But in terms of secularism and and just straight up, you know, outright freedom and um, individual um, expression of what it means to be a woman and what it means to be a man, that does not produce a better society. Um, because we, you know, women have all the rights in 2022 and men have all their rights, but it has not produced anything um, better. It, it has gotten worse. Um, but that's pretty much a, a, a general idea of what you can expect from this work. There's lots more to say, um, but I just wanted to share some thoughts about what she argues. It's it's really a lot. She argues everything from slavery to family to equal rights to women's rights to to spiritual spirituality and godliness and church and religion and um, a, a greater reach for something greater. Um, so it's a lot. I could go on for hours for everything that she raises within this great lawsuit. Um, it's literally everything you could ever think of in terms of family, life, romance, sex, um, um, and, and the place of woman in society. Uh, but, but those are a few thoughts. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.